As you already know, if you're a long-time listener, we don't sugarcoat our opinions about religion with polite language. We usually do the exact opposite because, uh, fuck that, religion's dumb. We're going to be super mean about it because religion deserves it. But I don't think we're ever more mean than when we put a piece of Christian music on display and then let Anna Bosnick do a version with talent right after that. And we're going to do it again today (laughs) with another segment of God Awful Music. And of course, I'm joined by the Anna Bosnick. Anna, welcome back. Always the guiltiest pleasure to be here, Heath. The guiltiest, darkest, secretest, <laughs> most shameful parts of me are elated right now. Fantastic. So excited. Fantastic. <laughs> it's real bad. And uh, oh. Eli, Eli, you're um, you're still here. You haven't said anything yet. You want to go? Thank you. I've been reintroduced into the podcast. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and Anna. Tell us, what Christian music do you have for us today? Is it anything with very direct racism built right into the title by any chance? Oh, buddy. You know what, listener? I want you to sit down for this. I hope you're sitting down for this. This (laughs) this is called... The title of this is... (laughs) mm, Nope, going back. You got it. You uh, You know what? This song is called... And are you sitting down? Are you sure? Okay. Please... Don't send me to Africa by Scott Wesley Brown. Yikes. Oh, oh, it (laughs) hurts to say it out loud. Cool. Any possibility the title's like misleading? It's actually about a like a talking postcard and some kind of mix up with the continent in in the address. (laughs) Oh, no, 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 no. It is exactly what it sounds like. Ah, the casual racism of the 1990s. This song (laughs) is... Is this casual? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, anyway. uh, This song does what my least favorite children's books do. As you heard from the title, the song is uh, about Africa. The continent. The continent uh, of Africa, yeah. People seem to forget has 54 countries, each with cities and uh, agriculture and suburbs and a rich cultural history but as big. Americans there's different parts <laughs> that are different yeah yeah but as Americans all we tend to see about Africa can be summed up by mm, nah, God, you <laughs> <laughs> that's about right so, that's true that's our cultural touchstone I learned that in geography class. You know, some sort of vague mix between the savanna and the jungle where giraffes, lions, chimpanzees all somehow know each other in a weird <laughs> hierarchical sort of society with not a single human insight. So as if to say, this is what Africa is, a wild land that has never known civilization. You know, just once I want to see someone create a kid's book about how the bald eagle is the king of America and all the <laughs> raccoons, mountain lions, subway rats, and Floridian <laughs> crocodiles somehow know each other and like live in the same neighborhood. Yeah. Just once. Just, uh, just anyway. And hang out. That's an amazing idea. I know you were doing a bit, but that's an amazing idea. <laughs> I know, idea. right? <laughs> I know. It's a wonderful, like we can get some giant rat-sized Texas TM. tarantulas in there. TM, and, TM, like, TM. Oh yeah, TM, TM. Do not steal this. No stealing at Disney. Anyway, this song sucks. That's what I'm trying to say. It sucks. So the song sucks. <laughs> like uh, the title. Yeah. And Eli, elaborate a little bit more. How bad was this music? Well, if you're a racist, you will love this music. Sorry, I know that (laughs) doesn't quite follow the pattern, but Anna did a whole long thing. So just trust me if you're a racist. That is accurate. (laughs) And is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, actual punchline? Sure. We'll get into it, but I, I'm pretty sure the thesis of this song is like <laughs> Africa needs our white saviorism. So sure really is. we should be going to yeah. Africa. It's, the hidden, yep. it's not so cleverly hidden. Yeah. I was going to go with best worst comment section on YouTube where I watched oh, it. Oh, God. It's rough. <laughs> it's oh, a no. bunch of Christian people saying how much they loved this as a kid. Already terrifying. But then I saw a comment from somebody named Rikert Botha. That's a white guy from South Africa. That's like one of the most popular last (laughs) names in Afrikaans, I believe. It's a white guy in South Africa, for sure. And he said, 
Is there a way to get in contact with the artist? It has profoundly impacted our lives. Not great. Not oh, great. No. Not real bad. Not the feedback you want. Oh, no. And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with Best Worst Defense. As we've casually hinted, this song doesn't age well. But don't worry, as we're going to find out in just a few moments, the author has a great explanation for this whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. And bonus, this amazing work of art comes with a music video. Oh, yes, it so, does. <laughs> before the music starts, we get a pastor telling his congregation in Texas the story of some wonderful Christian guy in that community. And then the pastor says, this great man went into the jungle and he never came back. Uh, he also mentions something about a car wash. He does, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. a little bit of a little lead in there. <laughs> and seriously, when he mentions the jungle, it has an evil echo noise. Yeah, yeah. And then evil jungle noises from, for sure, a Casio keyboard with like a racism preset button that he pressed. Oh, that's the actual start of the music. If you listen to it on <laughs> Apple Music or Spotify or wherever the else the fuck this thing is, it actually starts with, quote, native jungle sounds. And oh, quotes. seriously, that's, that was the button. <laughs> Close enough to racism preset. Yeah. And it, in the music video, when that part cues, it zooms in on an underage girl eating a lollipop in a way yeah. that made me pretty uncomfortable. But yeah, I mean, the racism is first and foremost. I just wanted to throw that out there. Too. <laughs> also, other problems. And here we go with the actual lyrics this guy wrote on purpose. Eli, do you mind uh, doing the lyrics for us? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Oh, Lord, I am your willing servant. You know that I've been for years. I'm here in this pew every Sunday and Wednesday. D Wednesday? People go to church on mm -hmm. Wednesday, too? Yeah, Seriously? Surprise to me. Yeah. Double up? Wow. Gross. I've stained it with many a tear. And <laughs> and they weep at yeah, church? Apparently, well, they're in yeah. church on a Wednesday. Twice a week or more? <laughs> yeah, because it's Wacky Wig Wednesday, and you're spending it in church instead of getting hammered at the gay bar as God intended. <laughs> there there see, you go. Now we know. Duh. <laughs> I've given you years <laughs> of my service. Literally reiterating the first two lines. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. he just said that. Also, the service he did for the Lord, we watch it in this video. <laughs> it's scrubbing the floor in the hallway of the church with Windex and a little dust broom, like a handheld yeah. mm -hmm. dust broom mm -hmm. without even yeah. like the pole coming out. Big time slip and fall hazard. I need this place's <laughs> address. So we, can, we can make some money here. He goes on, I've always given my best. And I've never asked you for anything much. So, Lord, I deserve this request. Don't say the title right after this. Please don't say the title Please right after this. Please don't send me to oh Africa. God, I don't think I've got what it takes. Okay. We have to talk about what's happening in the video here because it goes into black and white because it's sad because he's sad. And he is this, this native attire that he is wearing as brought to you by Great Aunt Martha's scarf collection. Yep. <laughs> He's wearing it like a toga. He's wearing like a leopard print scarf as a toga over a T-shirt <laughs> for fear of showing an ungodly nipple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, this was very clearly the caveman costume he settled for after his original costume oh idea was using up all the church's cork, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anyways, he goes on. I'm just a man. I'm not a Tarzan. Weird. Ugh. Okay, so the ideal person for going to Africa, according to this song, would be a feral white guy who doesn't speak any human language. Yeah, that's cool. For sure. Uh, Don't like lions, gorillas, or snakes. And he beats his chest like a gorilla and eats a handful of grass. Did he have to add the curly wig? <laughs> no. Does it make it significantly more racist? Oh, yeah. Sure does. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, sure does. We should point out that every shot of him as the caveman character for the rest of the song will just be him eating this grass he's standing in. So, you know, at least this guy ate a lot of grass. You know, there, there are upsides to the music <laughs> Yeah. Video. He seems to be impersonating a meerkat. Yeah. Unclear. Unclear. All right. He goes on. I'll serve you here in suburbia in my comfortable middle class life. But please don't send me out into the bush where the natives are restless at night. I, oh, God. Okay. So 
We get a little glimpse of what his suburban idealistic life looks like. And his glasses, his sunglasses, I'm just saying they are giving, I'm about to call the police because I saw a black person in the park. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, correct. It, it fits <laughs> is what I'm saying. And I know that this is like kind of the point of the song, but isn't I'll do the will of the creator of the universe as long as they don't have to leave my Western comforts and an inside thought, right? Well, okay, <laughs> yes, absolutely. But it's satire plus very real racism. Not real thoughts plus real racism. Did I fix it? <laughs> Did I fix it for him? Yeah, exactly. So now he's going to slow it down for us. He brings us back to the acoustics for this section of the song. And just from a songwriting standpoint, why would you slow down the music again? That's the intro. You've already gained so much momentum. You're just going to crap. You're going to make it so much harder for us to sit through the rest of this song. The worst. I was all the way on board until this very moment musically. Oh, and then I fell off. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a great song until this moment. Anna Bosnick. No. <laughs> make that quote there, Tim. I'll see that the money is gathered. I'll see that the money is sent. I'll wash and stack the communion cups. I'll tithe 11%. Huh. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quemption, for, for those who have grown up religious, do they put gross things in communion cups? Because he dumps out. Yeah, it's uh, the blood of a dead guy they put in yeah, there. It's the blood of yeah. a dead rabbi. It's, from, it's gross. Oh my God, I just realized communion cups are not tithing cups. <laughs> <laughs> they could All be. right. Because... <laughs> Okay, it, it, what he's he is cleaning out a tithing cup at one point, and he does dump out like some gross liquid. I had this image in my mind of someone like emptied their coke into the tithing cup. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah, blood of a dead guy. Show our communion cups. Yep, I, I'm on board again. Sorry. All right. Did you want us to keep this where you didn't know that where you thought I, that churchgoers kept uh, fucking tithes into <laughs> coffee cups? And sometimes people <laughs> poured random liquids into them instead. I mean, that's Would what you like this to be on the head. internet on our podcast? But you know what? I'll take it back and do the lines. How about that? Listen, you got to give 10% of your fluids. There's, You got to give 10% of everything. It's important. Yeah, sometimes people just urinate into the communion dish, darling. Yeah. This is what I got. I'm All dehydrated right. today. I'm just going to like sweat one tear drop. Well, uh, let's, let's get Anna a glass of water. Anna's going to take a sip of water. <laughs> <laughs> and remember how cups work, and I'll, I'll continue with the lyrics. <laughs> Great. Quote, I'll volunteer for the nursery. Okay. The image he's chosen here is insane. The image for the nursery is a baby vomiting directly into his mouth. Like, directly. directly. Yeah. yeah, directly. Yeah, yeah. A lot of bodily humor in this music video, definitely. Yeah, a surprising amount. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go on the youth group retreat. This line is accompanied by an image of kids burning him at the stake. And let me say, I get yeah, it. Yep. Yeah. Sure. I'll usher, I'll deacon, I'll go door to door. Just let me keep warming this seat. Please don't send me to the ends of the earth where the natives are restless at night. <sighs> ugh. That line is Rough. just, ugh. Ah. The end of the holy religious song. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So about that satire moment we got to there, I just want to mention one other comment from YouTube that I saw. Some guy wanted to make sure that nobody thought Scott Wesley Brown, who wrote this, was being offensive. Too late. So the comment was, <laughs> quote, the song is sarcasm about how we're willing to serve God, but only on our terms. Many people complain about not seeing the hand of God, but conveniently forget to look at the end of their own arm. End quote. Okay. Oh, God. So here's the thing. <laughs> Even if we grant the sarcasm, the song was saying, you should take up the white man's burden. How can it be racist if we're trying to save you? So that's the message. That's not great. Right. Even if we grant yeah. all the sarcasm to like paper over some of that. And this is what I was getting at with the actual punchline. There's actually an interview with uh, Scott Wesley Brown about why he wrote this song. And it's that he thinks we need to get up off our butts and go spread the gospel to Africa. Yeah. I, I don't think he used the word savages, but it was definitely the subtext of uh, this entire thing. Yeah, Absolutely. cutting room floor for sure. And, and to be clear, if you think what Africa is lacking is white suburban Christians, <laughs> I kind of do want you to get eaten by lions. So now I'm torn about the content of the song. I've come back sure. around on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the lions are endangered. They might need more food. <laughs> Just saying. All right. Well, that was a musical hate crime. 
good pick. Anna loved it. It was also a musical, musical crime. But apparently, <laughs> Anna found a way to fix it. I'm impressed. Anna, would you like to introduce your new and improved version of whatever that was? Well, Heath, in the spirit of charity, I uh, asked a very special member of the podcastiverse for help with this one. Oh. So without further ado, hit it, me. 